Order of Light presents A new era of contact UFO sightings and strange anomalies Secret space programs and off-world adventures Advanced technologies and new discoveries Extraterrestrial abductions and contactees Now is the time to speak as we explore the unknown, the uncertain, and unseen, we are the disclosure, and these are those stories. Hello, all of you wonderful beings of light. Welcome back to the channel. So happy that all of you are here tonight with my special guest, Megan Rose. She's had an incredible experiences through her throughout her life, going back since she was a child. Leading up till now, she's been in the disclosure movement and providing information for quite a while now. And Megan and I, we've been friends for quite a while, a long time, and we're always chatting. And there's a lot of things we have in common, a lot of uh, situations where we really resonate with each other and we understand one another. And I've always confided in the Megan when I couldn't confide in anyone else. And, uh, you know, we've been there for each other through thick and thin. And now we are here to allow all of you to really get to know Megan. And she's going to be providing some new information that she hasn't really shared super publicly and uh, for a long time. It's going to be uh, absolutely amazing, and a lot of the correlations with her story, there are some connections, and once you hear them, really resonates with my mother's experience and what is really going on. And with that being said, everyone, please hit that like button. Make sure you subscribe and check out the description for Megan's information and all of my information. And it is wintertime, right? It got cold. It was really, really cold. So for all of you, if you want some source Merkaba energy to keep you warm, check out the Order of Light Merkaba hoodie. So Merkaba right there, rocking and rolling. So keep you warm with the source energy. So yes, Megan, welcome to the show. What's going on? Thanks. It's a long time coming. <laughs> it really has it been. Has, it has gotten cold when we were just talking off camera. I'm at the barn in my Carhartt overalls. <laughs> I'm not looking like this at all, but it's gotten, yes, it's gotten really cold. So pick up the merch. <laughs> Yeah, thank you. Thank you. And yes, yeah, so tell us a little bit about yourself uh, before you, you know, a brief introduction before you get into uh, some of these very compelling experiences that you've had and the information that you've learned from them. I know everyone's going to be really interested in this and it really struck a nerve with me, hit me deeply. So yeah, tell us a little, uh, briefly a little bit about yourself. Who are you? Who am I? Well, I think that it's important to note, like, when you experience something, that's not actually who you are. You are not your experience. So it's hard to pick, like, a label, but we do use labels so that people know, you know, some sort of our background. Uh, but originally, I grew up in Northern Virginia, right outside of the big old Washington, D.C., and I did go to nursing school, and I worked as an intensive care nurse for a couple years. And then I quit, started my psychic mediumship business, and I wrote a book about my ET contact. And yeah, I've just been on YouTube sharing spiritual wisdom and stuff ever since. So, And yeah. have uh, you said a psychic medium. Has this yeah. been something where it's been since childhood? Or did you come into that at a later point? Um, I think, you know, since I was a little kid, was very sensitive to energy, sensitive to emotions, sensitive to what other people were thinking. Um, this is like kind of interesting because the holidays are coming up, but I always refuse to make a Christmas list for Santa Claus because Santa could read my mind. Why would I make a list? <laughs> and of course, I was disappointed when my wishes were not granted by Santa Claus because I refused to tell anyone. 
but that was like my little telepathic test. But so I've had an understanding of like telepathy and how to communicate since I was a kid. I really turned it off when I went through my traumatic experiences. So at age five, I was abducted. And at age nine, I was abducted. So I was afraid to, I kind of turned that part of my brain off, if you will, uh, or tried to as much as I could, which is also the point of these beings traumatizing us, right? They don't want us to access the higher consciousness uh, where all the knowledge is. And then I kind of went on my own healing journey, even though I think all of life is kind of like a healing journey, but did some more healing work and was able to open up and uh, had some pretty significant contact from my extraterrestrial rescuer, who's a member of my star family, while I was a nurse. And I felt comfortable enough to kind of open up and start working as a psychic medium. And so, yeah. So that's I have I, I have a quick question before because I have a lot of questions about your experience at five and experience at nine. But yeah. I have a question. A lot of people may be wondering this. Is there more of a vulnerability when you have these abilities such as mediumship or psychic? Do you think that makes for an easier um, I don't want to say target, but uh that really opened up doors for not just ghosts and past loved ones, but for extraterrestrials as well. Does that play a part in this? Yeah, I think there's, you mean to be abducted or for them to be interested in you? Yeah, definitely. I think, you know, it goes back to DNA and they can see, they have technology where it's kind of like the best word I can use is quantum, where you're, DNA is a physical thing, but it also vibrates at a certain frequency and emits a certain frequency. And we'll hear in the community people being targeted for their light. And that's really kind of how they target people is they have technology where they can see you, what frequency you're emitting, and that can be an indicator of what kind of DNA you have and a genetic capability for connecting or for psychic abilities. And a lot of children are targeted for DNA, but also to be put in programs like super soldier programs, because you'll make a really good super soldier if you have psychic abilities and are, are able to be trained in that way. So that's one of the reasons I was targeted for DNA and my uh, potential for psychic abilities. And at age five, I was abducted by the grays. I mean, there's tons of grays, but these ones are nasty. <laughs> can can so you describe them more? Yeah. So this one was, there was little grays. So these little grays run off of like artificial intelligence. They're very robotic. They're trained to do a job. So they will actually go into the room, your room at night and retrieve you. And they portal in, they'll use loopholes like portals and it looks like a flash of light and it's not something like turning on a lamp. It's literally like an energetic frequency, some sort of magnetic frequency, something out of this world, take you from your room and bring you aboard a ship under the instructions of these bigger, uh, more malevolent beings, I would say. But the, the one when I was five was a tall gray, what a lot of people will call a tall gray from Orion, the race Mitra. And very like, kind of like chicken skin-ish, like, okay. like gray, but chicken skin-ish, like very wrinkly, very large eyes that are sort of bug-like. They smell rancid, like rotten eggs on steroids smell very bad and they were really interested they weren't really sure what genetics i had so they were looking to take tissue samples to see if they could use me uh oh. and i really yeah and i really wasn't on the ship that long because i ended up being rescued by members of my star family and i've spoken you know about my friend valnick before but valnick 
is a highly ranked commander in the Federation. At the time, he wasn't. He was a pilot, uh, just a pilot. Um, but I was rescued by them, members of the Galactic Federation of Worlds. And so they rescued me at five. And then at age nine was, it was age nine, that abduction was a lot more traumatic, but I gained a lot of wisdom and knowledge and gifts from healing that situation. So I really feel like when we experience things, it's not to maybe make a story or yeah, like create a story or make ourselves into a story, but it's gaining the wisdom and knowledge from those experiences to help other people, which is the intention behind me sharing my story in the first place is to help help those little children and help heal the human race. So. Yes, and before we get into the experience at age nine, yeah. I wanna really zone in on this age five experience. Okay. You had with some you know, smaller grays and the mantra you said, these taller uh, grays with chicken skin. I got chickens. A lot of people that watch me, they got chickens. That's a really <laughs> good relatable term for us to understand their kind of skin, like kind of wrinkly as such. Yeah. Um, now, uh, what what kind of craft was that at the age of five? It was a triangular shaped craft. Can you describe it, the size of it, and the lights or uh, the interior? Anything you can describe about it would be great. They take you up, so triangular shaped, and then underneath it, there's lights, blue and red, underneath the the area of the ship. And then it's like they take you through that area. And um, the inside of it is cold, extremely hard to breathe. And I think because these little grays like the zetas and the tall grays their oxygen requirements must be different so it almost feels like when you are aboard the ship or when they take you up it's like you're suffocating and i had ptsd like for the longest time actually i still kind of do like i won't go like snorkeling or do stuff where like my mouth is covered because i feel like i'm i'm suffocating uh, if you ever had to intubate me or put me on life support, like not, <laughs> that's not going to happen because it feels like you're gasping, you're, you're gasping for air when you're aboard the ship. Um, wow. And your body, like because of this, like your body will kind of go into shock, like you'll start shaking. And then, um, yeah, that's, that's kind of how it feels. And my mom, you know, she said when she was aboard this, it sounds, the description's a little different, but kind of similar. When she was aboard this triangular ship, she described it as being very cold. Like she felt like the metal or whatever the material was, and it was cold. It wasn't warm to the touch. And at age 25, she had her lung collapse lung yes. drop which is found with people doing deep dives and astronauts she was yeah. a 25 year old young five foot nine skinny healthy beautiful woman and that makes no sense for that just to randomly happen and it's not right. even something that has happened to a cousin to a grandparent there was no one else in our family that that really happened to uh, which is something so strange, and uh, that's a great point. And also, you said they're very smelly. I know a lot of different gray extraterrestrial species. The way they consume nutrients is through their skin, and they also excrete, meaning they use the bathroom through their skin, and they are extremely stinky. You get used to them if you're around them, almost like a cow pastor. You smell yeah. the cow manure. If you're driving by, you go, oh, what's that? But you don't see the farmers that live there. They don't smell it at all. This is kind of yeah. how grays are. So very interesting um, facts. And with this triangular craft, did it have like the three lights on the corners or just the lights in the center as you were describing? There's three lights on the corners and then there's lights on the center too, like in a circle. And what were the color of the lights on the outside? You talked about the inside where they suck you up through, but what, what about the, uh, they corners? were like white. Okay. Plain white. 
so red and blue in the middle and then the three corners were white yeah wow. and i think the red and blue lights i'm not totally sure but the way that they suck people up is using like a magnetic it's like tesla technology sort of like magnetic frequencies and so I think the red and blue lights, like different colors represent certain frequencies, stuff like that. I think it was so, some sort of magnetism with those lights. And could that magnetism and the manipulation of those frequencies and vibrations, is that a part of the process of dematerialization? Is that what, what is going on? Because my mom somehow, yeah. some way, I mean, like we say magnets and people think of like a giant magnet and you have a piece of metal and it goes, but if you have a wall or a ceiling, you're not going to go through it, but it's almost like they're using that kind of technology to alter the frequency. Is that what's going on? And then the dematerializations yeah. happening. Yeah. Our souls in our physical bodies, all of our cells have a magnetic polarity. So you can materialize and dematerialize based off of that and using technology. So, yeah. Yeah, that's that's yes. oh, that's awesome. And that's where I was going with that. That's yeah. amazing. I mean, I'm sorry that you went through that, but just, you know, hearing how that operates, because it's something that's always baffled my mom, you know, and me hearing her like, so you just went through a ceiling and I'm touching the ceiling. And I'm like, I know they got advanced technologies, but how do they do that and then have you all back together and you're there physically, you're there physically, mentally, your soul's there as well. How do they get it all in one shot? That's um, yeah. all of our, interesting. All of the bonds that bond our molecules together have a, mo a magnetic polarity. You know, it's more complicated than this, but it's like, that's how my simpleton mind <laughs> can Yeah, understand. the genetic frequency that right. it took to create humans is evidence of creators. It's yeah. too intelligent, it's too perfect, and we are set out of frequency. Now, you were five years old, and Megan, you grew up on Terra, just like all the people that are watching this, myself yes. included. At five years old, I had my experience at three and a half, extremely young, but five is still extremely young. After you had that experience, how did you feel? And on top of that, did you share it with anyone? How did you process that as a five-year-old? Yeah, I didn't. Like, my memories were erased after I was rescued Valnick, my rescuer, erased my memories, and then he uh, helped me through my contact with him again, have my memories return, um, partially so I could heal that trauma in the subconscious. And so I didn't tell anyone. I didn't know. I grew up extremely afraid of everything. Like when the greys come into your room, they grab you by the arm, and then all of a sudden you're on a ship. So I would sleep under a blanket, like, and none of my limbs could be outside of the blanket, like little, little stuff like that. Like, cause in my mind, oh, you can't grab me cause I'm safe, you know? And that was like, for years I would do that. Like if I thought my foot was sticking out of the blanket, like I would just be grabbed, gone. <laughs> and I refuse. Like, I, I, I just, I, I want to say this real quick. And I don't, to my knowledge, I don't have any memories of abductions, but I just thought it was always weird, but my entire life, even if it's super hot, I need a sheet covering me. I cannot have my arms out. I can't have my feet out, especially my feet. Everything has to be tucked in almost like a cocoon mm -hmm. my, my entire life. And yeah. I, I, to my knowledge, I'm not an experiencer, but when I hear stuff like that, I've never thought, why do I do this? I'm not afraid of monsters. I'm not afraid of ghosts or anything like that. Why do I do that? And, why, and I wonder, everyone watching this right now, if you're the same way, please put that down in the comments. Let's see the connections here and try to figure this out. Maybe there's something else going on to cause that. So please continue. I had to throw it out there. Yeah. No, and then I was really afraid of sleeping. So I didn't want to go to sleep either uh, because I associated, you know, if I fell asleep, I was going to be taken aboard. And so I had sleeping issues or I would only sleep a couple hours a night. And I had um, not when I was five, but when I was nine, too, I started sleeping after that abduction. I started sleeping with my little baby sister 
And because I thought, you know, if I, I was with someone, then I wouldn't be taken. Um, so I had that in my subconscious fears. And I grew up extremely afraid. And uh, yeah, so it wasn't like an easy childhood. Like I wouldn't wish this on people. And I think that unfortunately, maybe ET contact is glamorized or maybe some experiences sometimes have been glamorized and it's really, really not, not the case. Like I wouldn't wish contact with some of these guys on, you know, on anyone. It's true. I, I've always said when people growing up my whole life, you know, 30 years and I would share it and people are like, that's so insane. That's so awesome. I'm like, you know, we're, we're just people of circumstance. We didn't ask for this. And it would have been one thing if we lived in a world where this was common knowledge, but to have these experiences and not have people to share them with or people to ask questions to understand what you just went through. The truth is we don't understand it. It takes us a lifetime to understand our own experiences. So what does that say about the experiences? You know, and it's, it's not the best in all cases. And um, yeah, there's some good moments and there's some bad moments, but the worst moment is not being able to openly talk about this in society. And because it is so covered up, the information that humanity needs just isn't there. Yeah, there are like certain, and also, you know, the historically speaking, the controlled narrative still exists. And authentic people, unfortunately, either their stories don't get heard or they might be attacked for a different reason. But something to um, for people to think about when integrating memories or erased memories, it's the emotions that is why we block them out. So what really gave me the courage is the love from my star family. I felt enough love. I felt safe enough to open up my mind to the fear and the trauma in order to heal it. So I'm someone like I'm lucky and blessed enough that I have someone that I know from home who has a job in the military, who was involved in my rescue, who helped me in that way, healing through love. So a lot of experiencers or people who've had traumatic experiences like this, The reason your memory might be erased too, and maybe that was done out of kindness, but also the reason we don't let all of those experiences maybe come forward to the conscious mind is because of the pain and the trauma. And really, truly, like these are just some nasty, these malevolent extraterrestrials, they they are just so nasty. And I remember like when I was in Catholic, I was raised in a Catholic family in Catholic school And when I was nine years old, I was abducted by reptilians. And so then I started like subconsciously, I'm like, okay, the devil is real. (laughs) Like they look like what the devil is depicted as like this complete, you know, draconian monster. But uh, so when I was nine years old, I was abducted onto a cylinder shaped craft craft. And mind you, I lived right outside of Washington, D.C. And like reptiles ruling the government, you know, to some people is a conspiracy theory, but not really, <laughs> you know. <laughs> it's set in season. Oh. Exactly. And so they they wanted me for two things. Uh, they wanted to take my eggs to start a hybrid program. Uh, They were interested in my genetics, in my DNA. And these beings, these reptilians are connected to the Nachtwaffen, the Dark Fleet. And they are also connected to three-letter agencies. And another race not a whole lot of people know about, but I believe they're mentioned on Star Trek, is the Tal Shiar. And those are humanoid extraterrestrials. They look like us, but they have brown hair. So all of those beings work together. And they wanted me for my eggs. And then they were going to sell me to the Nachtwaffen to be a super soldier because of my psychic abilities. And so they were going to take me through a portal to Mars to be sold. This is human trafficking, trafficking children to work for them. 
And thankfully, I was rescued again by the Galactic Federation of Worlds. And yeah, so here, here I am. <laughs> of course, I have tons of questions. Yeah, and it's, it's a firstly, lot. Firstly, at nine years old, you said this was happening and, you know, they wanted your eggs. Yeah. Is that when you started your menstrual cycle? No, but I think they take girls at nine years old because once you start your menstrual cycle, you're shedding eggs, right? So I think they take girls right before they start their period, period so they can get, they want as much eggs as they can get. Does that make okay. sense? Yeah, because my mom, when they, before it would just be interactions with the little grays and all of this and just simple tests, as you were saying. But when she hit nine years old, she got her period, she went through a menstrual cycle, and that's when they started doing the embryo removal and implants and the hybrids and all of that. So yeah. I just wanted to see, and it does kind of make sense, as you said, they're doing everything before to see if you're compatible. Right. Wow. Yeah. Wow. And those little grays that you saw before I we get more into the nine-year-old experience. Were there any messages telepathically? Were, were you told anything by um, the little grays in the mott tree? What, like, did they explain to you what was going on or were they emotionless and just didn't tell you nothing? Oh, uh, you mean at five with the yes. grays? Mm -hmm. uh, no, I, it was like emotionless and it was the little gray is completely emotionless the tall gray, the Mitra, um, kind of confused or like inquisitive, trying to figure out what I am, completely like no companion at all. Kind of like mean, but not really, oh, I'm frozen. Can you hear me? I hear you. Um, you're, <laughs> you're, get, you're getting them upset. <laughs> wow. Hold on. Wait. Okay. Just let you repeat that and we'll pick back up. Oh my goodness, you are like permanently frozen there. Yeah, I've never I've never had that. Is happen. your phone uh, you're on your computer? Yeah, I'm on my computer. I don't know why that's happening. What the heck? Uh maybe turn your camera on and off again? What's going on? We got good connection. All right, hold on. Well, there you go. You can't talk about them. <laughs> Those grays get upset. Where do you think we got all this technology from? They're taking her out. That was weird. I always debate, ah, oh, should I leave these parts in the interviews and all this? Or, uh, you know, that's wild. It's not the first time. Welcome to a new era of contact where the aliens can come into our private videos and manipulate the frequency. Obviously, we were talking about something they weren't too fond of. There we are. That has never happened to me before, ever. Might leave it in, and I was saying it's pretty weird. And I've had guests freeze and then their phone die, but I've never had someone stuck there like permanently. There's no pause no. button, and it would have just stayed like that if you didn't exit out and come back in. That was weird. I've never had that happen before, and I always use my computer for this. So, so the question was: At five years old, the Mitra and the Zetas, was there anything like their feelings? Were they emotionless? The Zeta reticuli, like completely emotionless, completely robotic. I was very scared though, because I'm like, what? Like it was very strange type beings to be around, so just something with completely no feelings or like auric field. And the Mitra like had a kind of a mean energy. And now, mind you, I'm comparing this to the reptilians. And in my opinion, the Mitra don't quite bother me as much. I don't know why. Uh, but definitely like mean. In, but inquisitive and he was curious about me he didn't know exactly what i was and i will mention this I, I didn't mention this before but they were trying to figure out you know who i was like my genetics and stuff like that and i've had 
an implant in my brain since I was very young, like two years old. And they've done this, like the Galactic Federation of Worlds have done this to little star seated children because they, the implant would emit a high frequency. And so for children of a certain DNA or genetics, it allowed your brain waves to attune to that frequency and develop properly because we're conditioned, we're coming into or being incarnated into a planet, which is um, mind control frequencies. And they emit these frequencies into the brain so that they don't develop properly. They can't learn to connect. And so I had that and many star seated children have that technology to help their brains form. So they were trying to figure out what I was. They started realizing I had implants and then I was rescued. And the Mitra got extremely angry when he started to realize like they had picked the wrong one. They've made a mistake, like very, very mad, very angry, um, kind of like giving telepathic messages to these beings. I could tell like, hurry up. Um, but I was a very like psychic, intuitive child. So I could pick up on kind of how he was feeling and what he was doing which is part of the reason why as a child, I shut my emotions down and I shut that part of myself down. They monitor them, the Galactic Federation of Worlds and the Orion Council, any star seated child or soul coming from a different planet to incarnate here and help heal the planet, they keep track of. And they is make that sure- why they were upset? I'm sure when they were inspecting you, they yes. realized that you had this implant and they're like, Oh snap, this is like a booby trap, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is exactly. that what was going on? Okay. Yeah. Oh wow. And people born like star seeds born in the 50s and 60s might not have these because understand the technology on planet Earth wasn't ad as advanced back then. So it wasn't necessary. So they've improved the program over time of, you know, we're going this is how we're going to protect these people, how to protect these kids. So yeah, absolutely. So and a few, I want to bring this up when it comes to implants. A few weeks ago, I had uh, Diana Dunbar, the lives of experiencers, and she sent me a voice message she randomly got after talking to her friend. And it was like a call center. And they're talking about implants that go in the ear, the brain and the hand. And mm -hmm. they're just talking like a shopping center. And they said her name, Mrs. Dunbar. And they forgot to hang up and you hear the conversations and it's a call center with music and they're talking about implants and the government and what kind do you want? Like they were selling Tupperware. Um, so this is uh, these days, especially it's going on and there's a lot of new entrepreneurs and companies out there that yeah. are public and you can read about it. And these things exist and they're getting really bold about telling everyone about it. Yeah, their implants are technology as a tool, and it can be used for good, and it can be used for bad. And um, luckily, I'm one of many came in with like protected was protected by technology. So, wow, you you can be harmed by it or protected. It's a tool. Yeah. It's, it's like a, a gun. Tool. You know, a gun can kill you. A gun can save you. <laughs> yeah, it's who is using it. Yeah, exactly. That's where things start to get interesting. So thank you for clarifying that with the, the grays. I definitely wanted to know what they were feeling. You know, um, what were you feeling from them? Did they say anything? Uh, what they were doing? And now I understand they kind of realized, uh-oh. So how and when nine years old and that um, cylinder craft that you was taken aboard on correct and you saw these reptilians of some sort some sort of species uh yeah. can you go more into that experience and what was going on in the process of yeah. all of that man i would just reincarnate like four times over just to talk about them just to let everyone know you know how nasty they are like that <laughs> <laughs> There's some people who have, I don't have, I'm not revengeful or vengeful, but like, I'm definitely like not pro reptilian at all. <laughs> and not all are bad, but whatever this 
whatever this species was was not a friendly one by any means. Right. So these reptilians are connected to or work with the German secret space fleet. And they also are involved in three letter agencies. They use the Zetas too, as like worker bees. And I don't know if anyone's mentioned this, but the Zetas, the little grays have four fingers. They only have four fingers and they don't have a thumb anyways. But these ones are, so these tall Draco-like beings, they have vertical pupils. They have kind of slits for pupils. They have scales. They are gigantic, like seven feet tall, like from what I remember, very extreme. On the shorter tall. side, they're the seven, shorter. and then they're even larger sometimes. Yes, and very kind of like a human sort of you would think of like muscular, very muscular. Um, and they have tails, of course, and they smell also too because they are sort of reptile like. Well, they are reptiles, but they excrete like reptiles, um, their waste products on the outside of their skin, so they smell. Um, and they are very, very, there's something just about them where they just hate. They hate certain species. They hate certain genetics. And they just, there's a feeling of them wanting to destroy, destroy little girls, destroy the divine feminine, destroy people with maybe Pleiadian DNA or certain genetic types, dominate them. Um, they're very sexually dominant, so they are known for raping women. And so this is one of the beings that I was, uh, you know, abducted by. And little known, this is kind of like creepy. And I, I want to share this because we're all in this community being watched. We're being watched by the good guys. We're being watched by the bad guys. And when I publicly started sharing my story about being abducted on a cylinder shaped craft, there's only so many beings who have that, um, that shaped craft. And I shared uh, previously the Tal Shiar. Uh, they are a renegade race from Taigata, uh, Pleiades star system. They are not benevolent. They have a long standing feud or uh they have a problem with the galactic federation of worlds and specifically uh the blonde haired blue eyed nordic aliens from the pleiades as well they don't like them they're enemies so the tal shiar sold cylinder shaped craft i can't say it 10 times fast <laughs> to to the reptilians so they sold that craft to the reptilians and when I shared my, my story publicly on a couple of YouTube channels, someone, um, you know, sometimes people pass along information from a source or maybe telepathically, and they don't know what they're doing. They're well-meaning. They want to help people. But someone shared this information. They said that the Tigatons are back in their cylinder-shaped craft, and it's a science ship, and they're back in the orbit of Earth. And I thought, oh, my God, they're messing with me. They know they're not the good Tigatons. They're the bad ones. And those that cylinder shaped ship sh shaped ship. <laughs> it is a science ship, but it's used for human trafficking and it's used for the hybrid programs to abduct little girls to get their DNA. So it is a science ship. So it was an accurate report, slightly twisted. And so they listen and they know. And I thought, oh, my gosh, they're messing. They're messing with me. They know, you know. Yeah, they're not here for the bananas and the apples, right. you know. And yeah. a great point that you brought up and I want to emphasize on and really illustrate a bigger picture. When you said that the this reptilian species was giving the technology and that's how they gain the control of other species they give them the technology and then they're kind of in debt to them. And right. something we got to ask ourselves every time, no matter what planet we find ourselves on, regardless of what time throughout our billion of year old soul that we have, whenever it happened, we always got to ask ourselves, where's the technology coming from? 
Because if you have it, it had to come from somewhere. And when you look at the privatized technologies we have that the public's unaware of, military complex, three-letter agencies, yeah, it's quite it's quite evident. And yeah. why don't they give that to the public? Because then they would have to explain how they got it. Right. Yeah. Yes. Exactly. And nothing is free in this galaxy. Nothing. Exactly. And so if you I want to mention too people who haven't pieced to piece together their memories with details like this, you're being protected because you will be targeted for saying certain things like this. Um, these three letter agencies keep a record of everyone who's abducted, what age, maybe they know, well, they obviously know cause I'm public, but it's a very big deal for one of these ships to be destroyed. I was rescued. This, this was expensive. <laughs> Their ship was expensive. They keep a record of when this ship was destroyed, who destroyed it, who was on the ship, where I live, who my parents are, who my parents work for. They know everything. So being, being a public person and knowing these kind of details, you know, you are kept track of if you're ever in the secret space program. And speaking of implants being used, it's highly likely that people in the secret space program also have implants. They're documented. When did you leave the secret space program? Is your implant still activated? Who you're connected to? So they they watch us all and, and, and they know. And there's a lot to come for disclosure. You know, when we're, it's really safe for all of us as a collective to come back, to come out and heal. Uh, but I just wanted to, to share that part of the story because it is dangerous. And the three letter agencies do know. And this was when I was nine years old, right outside of Washington, D.C., the suburbs of Washington, D.C. And and I wasn't the only child who's been abducted in that area. Right. Well, you you showed me something actually really interesting about the airport that was there. Correct. Yes. Uh, and I had no idea. I, I saw the name. I'm like, ah. Oh. And then I read the Wikipedia and I said, mm -hmm. right. Oh, and we all know that they put things under airports. All right. A lot right. of airports are built to cover up something yep. else, you know. Very and great point. Yeah, that's really interesting. If you wanted to give a little uh, right. history about the airport and the name and who it's named after, which is really close to you, right? Right, so the closest airport to my childhood home is Dulles Airport, named after Alan Dulles, the CIA director, who was the active director when President Eisenhower was in office, all the way up to John F. Kennedy, and John F. Kennedy fired him in 1961. So when I put all the pieces together, okay, how inconvenient that someone like me remembers this stuff or has um, contact with my rescuer, Valnik, who can put all these pieces together. It would be really inconvenient for my story to be like broadcasted, right? Because all of these beings work, made deals with these three letter agencies, the Tal Shiar, the reptilians, the German space fleet. They're all, they're all working together. They sold the ship that I was abducted on. They're, they are connected to, they may be, I don't want to get this taken off of YouTube, <laughs> but responsible for the assassination of John F. Kennedy. And when I released my book with a lot of intel from Valnick, who's a, a high commander in the Federation, Welcome to the Future, it's based on the U.S. Naval Intelligence Operation that was created with the Galactic Federation of Worlds and the U.S. Navy um, under with working with John F. Kennedy. So it's very, you know, of course, like I would be targeted in, in some sense, you know, it's a it's a kind of a compliment to be targeted in a way. But it's absolutely mind blowing. Like when we like when you put all the pieces together of how how deep in all the commonalities it's just like, oh, God. Yeah. And he was the CIA director before it was known as the CIA. And till this date, he was the longest reigning 
director that they've had throughout all history. Mm -hmm. All right. I'm sorry when it comes to motive, someone that powerful with all the dirts and all the secrets on every human being, extraterrestrial and other crypto terrestrial being on this planet, all information, all of it. And then you fire someone that they probably don't feel too good. And it really uh, provides a motive. But one other thing that I noticed in the article was his work in MK Ultra. Yeah. Like that, that's what he was doing. It, right. It's like, right there it said it real big like almost like it was an accomplishment good job worked wonderful yes. like they yeah. were proud of it yeah and mk ultra is how it's hollywood it's how they program the celebrities it's how they make the super soldiers and, and i'm very lucky that i wasn't on the ship long enough to be traumatized in that way or for them really really when i was on the reptilian ship they were like interested in sexually abusing me and also taking my eggs and and getting me to mars and that was when i talk about like the galactic federation of worlds like how fast they can be notified and how fast they can move it's like i don't know lightning speed or beyond the speed of light because where i was located was very close to portals and jump gates to mars and if I had gotten to Mars, like my story would have been very, very different. And I want to point out my DNA, like when we put, like when we talk about the German space fleet, them creating, like there's a story like in the hot, like with the Holocaust and everything it is them favoring the blonde haired blue eyes and making a super race. Like when you put together the pieces of them targeting little girls with DNA like me and making super soldiers or super race, or putting them in hybrid programs, it perfectly aligns. Uh, Captain America. Yes. Everyone's familiar with that movie. That's yeah. exactly what it is. Yeah. The same idea, you know, to make it PG for everyone out there. Uh, but yeah, those things are going on. And um, one thing I wanted to ask, and that's so interesting that you're bringing up, like this idea of creating, you know, this one certain group and especially with some of your genetics and what's going on there. Yeah. Um, when you said they were removing these embryos, I, I, I know it can be graphic, but um, what was that process like? Did they use a tool and how did they do it? Because I know sometimes people think it happens one way when it's really not what they think and how they remove these things. Yeah. If you're comfortable. I know it can be graphic. Uh, I prefer not to go into too much detail, um, but part of the process I will share is they will like inject like a milk-like substance into your body, I guess, so you can't move. But I remember being like kind of paralyzed after that and I couldn't move. So it's more like a surgical, a surgical procedure. And, but, uh, you know, without pushing it too much, was this through the stomach or lady parts? Uh, no, not through the stomach. Okay, the other, okay, wow. And that's something really interesting because uh, my mom, so many other experiencers, they go through it where they're using a tool right through the belly, for example, the tall whites. But the beings you were dealing with were different from the still nefarious, such as the tall whites, because the tall whites are also working with these other beings. But I have to wonder, does each being that is into this, would they do it differently? Like, look at how we birth children. I'm sure if you went to different countries or to a tribe or a village, the way they birth the child versus our medical healthcare system here in America, it's not the same technique the same science, the same tools being used. Do yeah. you think there's multiple ways that these species are doing this depending on the individual and the species? I think, yeah, I think it might depend on the individual. And I think it depends on like their culture, their whole nefarious like intentions. And I think that they have different like each being has different protocols based on like some people like a virgin matrix is inserted, like it's an artificial matrix and maybe that's what your mom had. Um, 
So I think it, I think it's different for everyone, but yeah, like the birthing, the birthing process for different species, it's based on your culture and your spiritual beliefs. So like, I know off planet, like in the Pleiades, a, a planet that I'm familiar with, how they give birth is no drugs. It's not a medical experience. It's a completely spiritual experience and mind, body, and soul. And it's sort of like the male and the female energies combine. The same energy in which the child was conceived is the way the energy that it's born into. So the male- Like a home, home birth thing. Of yes. spiritual people where the man will be right there and their love and family standing around right. lifting the vibration versus right. a hospital. <laughs> yes. And they, but they know how the male and the female know how to mesh each other's, this is in 5D, mesh each other's energies together. And the female, the female's energy, when she's protected in her divine feminine power, she is the portal of life, right? So it's about letting the energy flow and going through the, like going with the ebb and flow of the universe. And then when the child is born, there's no, it's not prolonged. Like the birth doesn't take that long. Like you hear women being in, in birth for like 48 hours. Um, it's because the energy is not flowing, right? Like yeah. it's something is stuck. The energy is not flowing and the baby comes out and they don't cry because they, all they feel is love. And it's the same energy inside the womb as it is outside. So they're completely calm and it's not traumatizing at all. And it's kind of like, um, you know, I don't know if this is the right way to describe it, but like first impressions are everything. So their first impression of life is love. And so they're always seeking that. It's a very like stabilizing experience for the soul versus on planet earth, the humans, there's a really traumatic birth process most of the time. And then you're smacked. You're kicked out. You're kicked out of the womb. You're like excommunicated. And the baby actually feels rejection and abandonment instead of love. So their first impression of life is rejection and abandonment. And that is on purpose. The cabal has created that system on purpose because they know the best, like how humans, the potential for humans. And it's all about our energy fields and energetically, um, you know, combining it with love. So, and that goes full circle with these reptilian beings that were taking your embryos and your eggs because, you know, exactly. when their children are born, they just throw them off in the wild. You know, not all reptilian. I, I got to be clear on this. Just some reptilian species are very animalistic. And it's the survival of the fittest, the reptilian right. part of the brain. And their children from day one, just like us, they just throw us out. Except a couple days after, our mom and dad will finally get to hold us and have us. Yeah. But the reptilians, no, nope, I'll see you. Yeah. I'll see you. Yeah, Good the luck. reptilians <laughs> yeah, don't value their children. And a lot of the way we treat our children, we learn from the reptilians. The, they believe that, you know, because they are older, they'll tr their children are less than. They believe that their children, because they created them, are property. And how many people can have say they have narcissistic parents or parents with those ideologies? You know, you're little, I'm big, I know more than you, I've been here longer. It's draconian. It's draconian. You know, the process of trafficking anything regardless of what it is, you are looking at that as a product and not as a human being. And it goes the full circle. These ideologies that some of these beings have, have completely trickled down mm -hmm. into our modern day society. And it's all starting to come to light at a rate where people can't even keep up with it. It's ridiculous, but yes. it's, a necessary part of growth and growth can be uncomfortable and it can be really uncomfortable to face these truths. And for you, Megan, when you did have these memories come back to you and you're reliving that trauma and that situation 
and then realizing your role in all of it and some of the heinous and awful and disgusting things they were doing with you. How did you not give up? How what how did you make it through? Like what what was your inspiration to help you process that and to keep going? I mean, I definitely uh... I think anytime you're processing like pain and trauma uh, with trauma survivors, you have to relive the experience and feel the emotions of it. And then you'll regain a different understanding. But a lot of trauma survivors are afraid, are afraid to do that because it's so painful. Uh, So I can, it was painful, (laughs) you know, trauma, healing, healing that trauma is, is, was, the most like painful thing I've ever done. Um, Why didn't I give up? I think on a very high level, part of the reason that I incarnated here is I want to make sure that children and, and any parts of the galaxy living on earth or back home or wherever have a bright future, have a positive future, have a chance to live to their fullest potential. So connecting to my inner being and knowing that's what I came here to do. And I think, I don't think I purposely before I came here was like, yes, I want to be abducted and I want this to happen to me. I think on a very high level, like on a spiritual soul level, you know, when you're not in a body, I attracted the experiences that I needed to give me the knowledge and the wisdom to manifest that intention, which is healing the children, the the children that's been through very intense sexual abuse, where people are drinking stuff like that starts with the A word. It's on YouTube. So I don't want to say it. So uh, Rico loves it. Rico drinks a lot of it back there. So that kind of so not giving up. It's for myself, for my little inner child, but also for the children. Like, That's why I wrote my book. Like when I wrote my book, I was like, okay, I'm just going to put it all out here. And it's short for a reason because I'm not someone who will read like a 500 page book. (laughs) You know, I want to put it all out here so that this does not happen again. And really like the contact with my star family, uh, one of them is publicly named Valnick, High Commander Valnick. Um, one of them is publicly named, but I have others. But really the support and the love from them is what helped heal me too. And I want to make sure that we in this commun- community manifest a place where we all can have public contact or it is safe to come out. And one of the ways we do that is by healing the trauma. Do I think that this community is ready to hear certain stories or accept or create a, I don't necessarily like using the safe space because I think the cabal has twisted that ideology, but creating a place where we can love and respect each other. Do I think we're ready to hear all of these stories? I don't know. You know, I don't know. Not yet. I think there needs to be a lot more healing because I think the problem is, is we're looking at someone or an experiencer, and if it's not packaged in the way that we want to hear, or if it's not packaged in a way that we think is authentic, then we reject them. We actually do the same thing that the cabal does, which is reject, abandon, scapegoat, um, you know, that kind of energy. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and I want to make clear, too, the point of having benevolent ET contact If you're contacted by your star family, it's not to give some like groundbreaking intel, (laughs) you know, that might be secondary, but the number one reason is to love, heal and support you as an individual on your mission. The people that randomly contact people or use people as um, a vehicle to deliver information only is the cabal. You know, the cabal is not there to love and support you and they just want to use people to give certain information but the benevolent contact yes you might get some intel but it will also be to love and support you as an individual so the galactic federation of worlds if you're contacted from someone by there they will be it will be on the link of love first and then intel or information second 
Yeah. Now uh, to understand. So really sounds like with your experiences with these beings that you were being kind of groomed to be thrown into the trafficking and all of this stuff that was yeah would have occurred but to understand you correctly you were rescued before it got to that point so i was yes i was rescued before i got to mars okay before so like never, stuff would have really really got bad yes and i would have that point been unrescuable had i actually been taken through the portal to mars to be sold but i was rescued before that it was like it was quick and i remember the reptilian um they have you know dragons get the rap of having psychic abilities for a reason i, I think it's modeled after the reptilians they have fantastic psychic powers where they can project nasty images and mean things into your mind. So they were doing that to me as, uh, you know, when I was on the ship too. Um, I totally lost my train of thought <laughs> thinking about but, their psychic powers. But they, they were showing you some of the things that could have been, that's where you were going. Like you got out before yes. it was too late, but they were showing you and yes. tormenting you Right. some of those things that could have happened yes and i was telepathically linked to the reptilian and as soon as i started to feel a shake on the ship when the federation got to the ship the reptilian and i enjoy this a little bit was so mad he was so pissed and it was almost like this fear like it you know this fear this reptilian was slightly afraid like i made a big mistake like i really I really messed up. Like something went wrong. This was the wrong one. I did something wrong. And, you know, I was rescued and the ship was destroyed. But um, yeah, but just remembering how the, the reptilian was shocked and afraid oh, keeps me warm at night. <laughs> yeah. And as you said before, you know, that's a lot of money and resources when one yeah. of these crafts get taken down and they right. do keep tabs. Hence the UFO that crashed behind my house yes. like that's that was a lot of money there was a lot of something a lot of technology that just went down back there and i mean we did have the men in black and air force in our living room so i yes. mean that it they take notice and right. unfortunately i know they know exactly who i am but yeah. and they know who you are but it doesn't stop us from doing what we're doing does it yeah <laughs> you might be like i don't know you might be really protected too and i'm sure they have your have had your name your social security number your entire family line, lineage probably a dna sample of who, who you are you know like there's no you can't really hide from them you have putting to putting you on ridlin as a kid to make sure you're cut off etc this, this is how deep like uh, we could like create like a whole nother episode but like sending certain like influencing people to send you to certain schools or this didn't necessarily happen to me, but just, I know how the cabal works, sending MK ultra handlers to you or sending people, certain people to you, certain therapists, like stuff like that. Like this is where people become targeted individuals and, and those programs and that stuff really exists, you know? Yeah. And uh, one thing I do want to ask you when it comes, uh, as you mentioned, you were, with these reptilians and they were taking your embryos and eggs. Did you ever get to see the end result of why they were taking them? Did, did anything come of that or were you out before you could even see what they were doing with it or what they created with it? No, I was really, I was really out at like, okay. I I kind of prefer not to say, but they, you know, the intention behind it was create a hybrid, a hybrid race to be used as, you know, soldiers, super soldiers and stuff like that. Maybe they were testing and still trying to tweak. They, they didn't get enough of it to because they did this constantly my mom's entire yeah. life. So if they would have just figured it out the first time. You know, they wouldn't have done it so many times. And my mom described each being looking a little different. Like some yeah. were misfires, some were perfect, some were a lot more gray extraterrestrial looking. So yeah. um No, they so didn't like, get they didn't get what they needed and they didn't get what they were looking for, and the ship was destroyed. 
So any like any genetic material they collected from others um, or like that's what I'm saying. Like it was a really big deal to like destroy one of these. And and I didn't even mention one of the most important parts. This was in 2001. This was, you know, we all know what happened in 2001. Yeah. The same yeah. beings, the same type of beings responsible for a huge false flag incident. Yeah. And who who go, so, going up? Yeah, you know, yeah, to hide all the money they just lost, and that all that money that was missing at that time in two thousand and one. Remember that time yeah. where all of the world's money went missing. Right. And then you have a craft that is designed with billions of dollars of technology and exo materials and mm -hmm. the engines and the propulsion systems. Yeah. That's a lot of money, and Congress is going to want to know what happened to the tax dollars. So, bye bye. Yeah. Alt control delete. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> so, like, luckily, after that, they didn't bug me or like I wasn't bothered uh, like that well, by them. So, I mean, thankfully, because it was destroyed, you don't need to sit there. Because I was wondering, I'm like, I wonder if she has, you know, hybrid reptilian super soldiers, but. It no, must kind of be a relief knowing yes. that it was canceled out because it would have broke your heart knowing that you had these beings that are being manipulated and yeah. you're cut off from the program, but they're still in there. It, yeah, it really no, hurts me, you know? That, uh. No, but like there is like, and like for people like your mom who's had genetic material taken, there is a huge, a huge emotional toll of having a child somewhere else and not having contact with your child. Um, and I can imagine it's almost like being in prison. It's like being enslaved and you're a slave to your own body really too, because you're not in control of creating these children the way that they were meant to be created, you know? So yeah. that, and that is really like when you talk about malevolent extraterrestrials and their agenda of harming the divine feminine and manipulating the divine feminine using that energy instead of the divine masculine which is giving to that energy nurturing that energy protecting that energy that's how our planet has been you know messed up and that's why like i share my story for people like your mom i mean she wasn't accepted back then and she may not have been accepted even now you know people have a really hard time uh with some of this information so you know yeah it's a lot and you're absolutely right my mom all the time i just wanted my babies i just want my babies i miss my babies i want to see my babies and any good mother that would be their response regardless of what the babies are if it's right. even two percent of the love and light and source that is found with you mixed in with 98 percent draconian butthead or uh, nasty, you know, uh, extraterrestrial. It don't matter. There, there yeah. still has to be some small percentage of you in it. And if that's there as uh, that divine feminine, that motherly yeah. kickover, they kind of um, distort that and use it in a way mm -hmm. to, uh, for whatever their purpose may be. Um, and yeah, you really lucked out getting rescued and unfortunately not every person gets rescued because yeah. they're doing it to a lot of people a little amount of people a lot of people what how many realistically great question i i'm sure everyone's gonna love it how many people think are involved with this say the earth has just about eight billion people on it could yeah. you give an estimate of how many people are going through this phenomena i think, think it's definitely in the millions yeah like definitely in the millions especially with the secret space program and stuff like this and in 2001 this is a time when they were abducting people like crazy oh no it did it again can you see me <laughs> <laughs> i hear you but oh man we we oh. are them off with this one we sure are they are not liking this okay hold on let me try and fix it 
Oh boy, for the second time. Oh my goodness. They are getting upset with us. We're talking about the no-nos. Things they don't want everyone to hear. I personally believe that's a lot more than a million people. <laughs> oh, and you know, I think it's possibly a lot more than a million. I think it's tons. Look at any military. And the thing is, unfortunately, with genetic material, an average woman produces tons of eggs and embryos. So it may not be every person on the planet because they can get so many, like thousands out of just one individual, which kind of makes the difference. And that may be a part of why not everyone is having this experience. But then you got to times that against the amount of species that are interacting with this planet and all the other ones that are doing similar things of this nature. And it's definitely up there with a lot of people. Yeah. And in 2001, they were abducting people like crazy because they wanted to build an army. Like this is, this was the mission. This was the goal. Part of the reason for the false flag is we're really going to start pushing the NWO. We need to, you know, control space. So it was, you know, that time period, I know that they were abducting people a lot. Mm. Something really interesting right around that time period, because they put me on Ridlin because I had a hyperactive mind, meaning that I could think about more things than an average human can. And I love playing music and drums. I'm a native, go figure. But um, you know, you. it's interesting because right in eighth grade, that's when my parents pulled me off of Ridlin because the military came out that same year saying that anyone that's on Ridlin after the age 13 or 14 won't be allowed to go into the military. Wow. I ended up going into ROTC. I came from a military family. I was gung-ho on going into the military. It's all I wanted to do. Yet the government forced me to go on Ridlin. What, mm. Why is that? The, the one kid that wants to be a soldier, athletic, strong, tall, fast, smart, won my math be, highly excelled. I wanted to be in the Air Force after having our encounter. You know, I always thought if I want to know the truth, I need to go in the military and find out. I didn't care how I got it. I just wanted to know for my own sake and sanity, even as a small kid. And um, it's really interesting that they came out, like you said, they were trying to build their own army. And they can't have those that are mercenaries and rebellious that can't be controlled because we are protected. So they would use pharmaceuticals to cut off this entire generation from being able to infiltrate their science project. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Wow. Anyone, anyone with like psychic abilities or like really highly creative abilities, um, very strong sense of self, that kind of thing was, you know, if they can't kill you, they have to turn, if they can't um, like turn you, then they have to kill you. Like they, I forget the saying, I'm forgetting it now, but yeah, they either are going to try and control you, kill you, or manipulate you to work for them. So, um, so yeah. Yeah. And when I was on that stuff, my mom felt so bad. She eventually took me off. She said, you were like a robot. I would come home from school. I would do my homework. I would watch the six o'clock news, 12, 13 year old boy out in the field. All my friends are playing football. Like I used to do all that. And like, it just turned me into a robot. Oh yeah. I had all A's all 100s on every paper, but my mom just couldn't stand me being this robot. Uh, that's what she called me. She was like, you were a little drone, and it broke my heart every day seeing you like that because my mom knew exactly what I was. You know, my mom knows who I am. It's my mom. She was yeah. there during the process, so it broke her heart, and um, I'm thankful they took me off, and, um, and that was just a really interesting correlation to the time frame because that's exactly when all that was going down and I never understood why the military did that and that kind of gave some deeper insight and I know about half of the people that are watching this were diagnosed with ADD that's what it used to be called and then they renamed it ADHD it's the same thing I mean 
they try to make it different because they can make a new pill for it and make more money. But it's the same thing. You just got to change the name so you can make more money off of it. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> Yeah, no, there's a big agenda, but in like trying to change the way the brain processes information, they give us all kinds of drugs, chemicals, um, so that they can affect that ability to connect to the higher consciousness. So, yeah, um, wow. So, you know, after this um, experience, nine years old, you're rescued, they were doing these uh, projects and stuff, your team, your, your, your helper, you know, your, your guys helping you along, you know, and teaching you these things. And you had to go back and revisit your experiences, right? You, you had to relive them, unfortunately, which yep. was a, a lot to take in. But as you said, their love, you know, kept you going. The right. ones that helped you, their love helped you push through it. Yes. And um, you weren't going to play the victim card. No. Right? And yeah, exactly. You, you you have it, and you doing what you're doing now, it's not the victim anymore. And I encourage everyone out there that's listening to this: you don't have to be the victim. You don't have to be, and it's time that you know. It's circumstance. None of us asked for these things, and yeah, I mean, some of us asked to come to this planet. But we definitely didn't ask for all the crazy stuff that would be going on. That's the whole reason we came here to begin with is to try to help out. Yes. Uh, we didn't realize what we were getting ourselves into at any point throughout our entire galactic history. Uh, we we just think we can fix everything. <laughs> Na naive uh, ancient souls, you know. Um, you only can do so much in the vessels we have now, right? Yeah. Only so much. Uh, I would describe it as like before coming here, extremely confident of our success. And then maybe when you incarnate here, you're like, oh, this is a little bit harder than I thought. But <laughs> my, my ego got me good. That's what it is. <laughs> you know, like the other day we were chatting, you're like, they really sent the best here. Like <laughs> everyone that is here now, you are literally top shelf because that's yeah. what was needed. No, no other could get the job done. Hence the mm -hmm. reality we live in. Yeah. Not everyone that wanted to come here got to come from my knowledge. Like they, it requires a lot of security, a lot of protection. Um, there's a lot more that goes into it than just, oh, I'm just going to live a life on planet earth. Like you have a team watching over you, people making sure, like there are things that like I'm protected from and that you're protected from that I'm not even aware of. So I'm speaking in general terms, but, um, but yeah, the best of the best were sent here and that's what we are. So I don't give my power away to extraterrestrials. And I really am someone who I like to figure things out on my own. And so I'm not interested in always communicating with Val, like getting like the whole galactic history of everything. Like I'm independent and I see myself as an equal. And really, truly, I am between the two of us. I am the one who gives really good spiritual advice. <laughs> like yeah. that's why I came here and incarnated is to um, heal the emotional wounds. Like I am emotionally intelligent and emotionally strong. So I'm not yeah. always looking to him for all of this advice about how to run my life, et cetera. It's really more like we're friends with these guys, you know? Yeah. And you we, don't you don't need the man mansplaining. Right. You know? That would be so <laughs> that would be so annoying. <laughs> but we're really friends with these guys. And if you came here, you were just as spiritually evolved as they are. You just forgot. You know, you just forgot. You have to return to your true nature and return to yourself. And I do like a lot of QA's or give information sometimes on behalf of Valnik. And my intention in that information is and his intention is to give enough information to help people critically think, but not necessarily tell them the truth or be the only one stop, like one stop for truth, because that creates enslavement and codependence. More so, questions, not answers. Right. Yes, exactly. So it's I, I like the way that Valnick gives information. It's enough information to 
critically think and find the truth for yourself without being codependent on extraterrestrials. Yeah. And something I believe, and I would love for you to go into this more. Now, we're, you were talking about your team and guides, and I personally believe that everyone has team and guides. Right. And mm -hmm. not just extraterrestrials, but could you elaborate on that? Because I think it's so important. Uh, our job, Megan and I, it's not to disconnect ourselves from all of you. Uh, all of you are honestly no different than us. Yeah, all of us may have different genetics or this or that, but hey, we're all here on this rock together. So could you go into details and explain to everyone, you know, about their team that they may not be aware of them even having. Yeah. So I definitely agree with you. Like earthling, starcy, whatever you might use to label yourself. We all have a team that's watching out for us. I don't and like when I give readings or help people spiritually, it is so important not to tell them like necessarily who exactly their guides are or who that team is because I believe it's an individual experience. Um, and you may start out in your spiritual journey thinking that you have a little helper that is a lion, like that's an animal that's crossed over. And then you may learn more and go through a journey and think, you know what? No, I maybe think that this is an extraterrestrial that I'm in communication with. And that's okay. We need to live, like we need to leave room in the spiritual community to evolve and to spiritually evolve and not always being right um, a, like right off the gate of who you're in contact with or what, who your spirit guide is, there needs to be a room for evolution because we're opening up the consciousness. We're not trying to control it. So it's okay to think, you know, I'm, I'm Pleiadian. And then, you know what? Oh, but maybe I'm from earth or maybe, you know, it's an individual process and they're there for answers or to reveal the next step of the answer when you're ready. So when my abduction, like my abduction experience, my whole life experience, a lot, I didn't get a lot of answers until I was ready, you know, so each step of the way. So, and I, I say the same, that's my advice for, you know, people watching is it will be revealed to you when you're ready. And, you know, if you're on that path of spiritual enlightenment, then, you know, that's your intention and the universe will attract the, you know, the intention to you. So. Yeah, that's, that's amazing. And one uh, little thing to add on that, you know, uh, other than like external guides, human genetics, our DNA, every other being that has had this genetic code, they have left imprints on emotions, feelings, memories is all within you. Every ancestor that you are connected to earthly, galactically, it's all there. And it's all tapped in. So, like, you could say that they are physically with you. They're designed right in your DNA. The That's reason true. you are the way you are and the reason you and I do silly things sometimes. We're like, oh, why did I do that? Yeah. Probably had a great, great, great ancestor that did the same thing. Yeah. Uh, you know, this kind of situation. So, it's not just an um, extraterrestrial thing going on. But it's also a very terrestrial, whatever planet that terrestrial may be. Um, yes. You know, whoever came before or, it, for example, let's talk about the hybrid programs. Whoever's eggs or embryos were used to create this hybrid, this uh, kind of being. You know, yeah. maybe they took like 50 different species and all put it together. That means whatever that is, is somehow, some way connected to all 50 species. Yeah. So it's all within us. And uh, the hardest, it's easy to talk about. The hardest part is activating it and getting in tune with it and learning how to listen without judging yourself. Right. Like, yes. like you said, when you were a kid, maybe it was imaginary friend. Once yeah. you got older and realized, well, that's not how things go. Maybe it was an imaginary friend. And I wonder why it looked like a big praying mantis. Exactly. Oh, and then I start studying extraterrestrials. And this ain't my experience, just an example. Start studying extraterrestrials. I found out there's this mantis being. Could have been my imaginary praying mantis best friend as a kid yeah. was actually a mantis being. And then you start studying more and you're like, oh, they're people. Yeah. <laughs> oh, 
<laughs> higher density ones that exist in like the eighth, ninth density. What is going on? They're not even physical. They're light and frequency and vibration. The process of discovery and being open minded enough to gain the messages you need. As you mentioned, Val Neck has always been patient with giving you no more than what you can handle and what you truly need. Yeah. This is why it's a life process, a journey to uncover these things. And it's not easy. And we would be lying if we said it was. Yeah, I'd be a big liar. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And but yeah, I mean, that's a good point. Like spirit or spiritual entities or extraterrestrials may appear as something that's comfortable to you as a child. So you might have an imaginary friend that's actually an Andromedan or maybe a loved one crossed over is actually appearing to you as like a bird or something. So it's just about, you know, what, what step you're at and what, you know, what your brain will accept and how, how it makes you feel. And if you feel safe enough to explore that area of consciousness, you know, and a and lot of people, um, when we like pish posh or reject other people's experiences in their spiritual community, it's because we can't accept where our consciousness is at and the understanding of who we are spiritually. So it's a deflection and it's projection. And that's something, you know, I think that's something that we need to change if we want to evolve as a race. One last thing before we wrap up. How do you tell the difference between like if you have a benevolent extraterrestrial experience and we've talked about this before. How do you tell the difference between a benevolent ET experience and one that is generated using technology or government technology and it's the frequency of love. It is like when you are contacted by a benevolent extraterrestrial, you'll feel an overwhelming sense of love and compassion. Euphoric you Euphoria. almost like, yes, euphoria. And if it's used to deceive and it's if it's created with technology to deceive, it's going to mimic what you think love is, but it's not the feeling and the vibration will be missing or it will be a lower frequency. I got you. So so. I just wanted to add that because there is like a technological layer to, to stuff that can be perceived as well. Um, so, yeah. But we yeah. could talk for like two hours. <laughs> oh, but yeah, yeah. so <laughs> I, I've had a blast and I, I'm glad uh, it, it's it been so many interesting little connections and information. And I was so happy to hear more about your experience. It's been a pleasure having you on, Megan. It's been a Thank blast. You. Yes. And everyone, make sure you go down in the description. I will have her YouTube channel, her website, all that good stuff. Please feel free to reach out to her if you're interested in learning more or maybe you've had an experience. I'm sure she'll be up in the comments. So after the video, if you had a question, you can leave it in the comments and uh, she can get back to you that way if you would like. Also in the description, you can find all my links and all that stuff, donations, merchandise, my social platforms, all that good stuff. So everyone, please hit that thumbs up. Please share. Stay tuned for next Tuesday, 7 p.m. Eastern Time, every Tuesday night to say, oh, I forgot. It's been the same thing for a year now. Every Tuesday night at 7 p.m., it hasn't changed, not once. So everyone out there, I hope to see you next time. And Megan, I know we're doing a lot of different little side projects together. So yes. all of you will probably see us doing a lot more together. We've been doing a lot with our Chanel you know, Dr. Yes. Charnel and uh, all that good stuff. So, and uh, I'm sure we got some things in the work and uh, stay tuned. And uh, in the future, hope once we get a better idea of what the heck we're doing, we'll <laughs> let all of you know. We're, we're, we're planning though. We're working hard and our, our brains are going and we're trying to come up with uh, the best ways to really help this community, the best ways to really help experience experiencers to have that confidence to come forward and to feel free to speak and have a better understanding. We're all in this together. Ain't that right? It is. Yep. Thanks for having me. Thanks everybody. Yes. See you all next time. It's a new era of contact. I, <laughs>
disclosure's over. Disclosure happened for us a long time ago. It's not yeah. disclosure. And contact has always happened. The only difference is it's a new era of contact. <laughs> so that's yeah. what it is. New era of contact. We'll see you all next time. Love and light. Robert Earl White with the order of light and all of those three things rhyme. It sounds tight. See you all. Have a wonderful night. Oh, that was like six rhymes. Woo. See you all later. Peace. Hey everyone, check out the Order of Light merchandise store. We got a lot of different t-shirts there. The Humans Aren't Real, Lower Always Creek Incident. We got tank tops and Merkaba. We got stickers, glasses, a lot of different glasses. So get thirsty. We got bags. I live in New Jersey. We don't have bags anymore. So it's really nice. We got flip-flops, hoodies, and all the ladies out there. We got a bunch of awesome merchandise for you. Please join the YouTube membership for my channel. You will get exclusive badges, really awesome emojis member only live streams posts and chats and connections with me for only 5.99 a month see you there